What is up everybody? Welcome to the custom Hoyt Helix build. We are here at Wild Arrow, me, Brian, and my man, Jeremiah, who's gonna set us up today. If you saw on the, our, some of our Instagram stories, I just got a Hoyt Helix in storm gray, and it's pretty much bare bones right now. So we have brought it to Jeremiah here at Wild Arrow, and he's gonna tell you some reasons why you might consider the aluminum build Helix over the RX3 or maybe over some other bows. Yeah, these, uh, I'll tell you what, I really think these helixes are really underrated. It's probably one of the best aluminum Hoyt bows uh, we've ever shot and tuned. So uh, it's got their all new cam and limb pocket system, incredibly smooth and quiet. But um, yeah, I mean, for guys that want a good high end Hoyt bow, but don't want to jump color to the RX3, maybe that bow's a little bit out of your price range. Uh, don't uh, don't overlook this bow. I think it gets overlooked quite a bit here in the shop. So, but uh, you're gonna love it, man. Yeah. This thing's gonna shoot awesome. And you brought up a good point with this guy too. So if you compare the price point of the Helix to the RX3, maybe if you're looking to get into archery or you're looking for a step up in bows, you could pretty much set up the Helix with some really decent accessories and have a great shooting bow versus the price of the RX three just bare bones. So you can right. have a fully set up bow for about the same price. So if you are thinking about it, maybe just try shooting one, but we are gonna build one today. Nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just, this gives me a kind of a, a groundwork to work on with your, your um, draw length. This measurement wall here, if you go ahead and put your back up against the wall, put the tip of your finger against this board here, and then let's look at your wingspan. So your wingspans tell me about 28 on the wall, okay? That's a good starting point. So, but kind of what I tell my customers is there's a lot of, there's a couple of variables that happen with that. Number one, every bow is gonna fit you differently. Some bows draw links tend to run long, some bows draw links tend to run a little short. Okay. So this gives me a good starting point, but when we start shooting, I'm gonna look at you at full draw and look at your body structure. So, you know, if you like to maybe be more expanded and more pushed out like this, versus some guys like to be more collapsed in. And I'm gonna look at your head position, your release thing. So this gives me a starting point, but once we get you set up, I'll look at your full draw and if we need to make Some any adjustments, adjustments. Yeah, no problem. Cool. cool, sweet, let's go throw this on. So on this bow, this cam can adjust from 27 all the way to 30 inches and in draw. And it has this nice little limb sticker up here to kind of tell you. So to go to a 28 to start you there, we have to go to the C position. And from the factory, the shipped uh, in the E position, which is 29. So what we gotta do is move this top post to the C, move these bottom posts to the C, and this is a dual peg system down here. Mm -hmm. So move that to C, and then we're gonna rotate this module. And everything is, has that letter coordination there to it. So okay. we'll grab some wrenches and adjust that down. Nice, loosen those, and then the problem with this one is that the C is kind of hidden underneath that limb. Yeah. So you can't quite see the, the positioning there, but I can feel it click in. You'll feel a little yeah, post yeah. click in. Yeah, so you see that and then if I count, you can kind of see these are recessed here where the screws tighten. So if I just count one, two, three, then I know I'm in that, in the right position there. So, it's not, that's all right. Tighten that down. This one's a little trickier because there's two modules on each side of the cam. So this top side that I'm working on just kind of floats. It doesn't have a post, but when, and when it drops down, you can actually see that C position there. Let's tighten that back down. So that's really just where the cam stops. Mm -hmm. okay. The old the split cable was only pulling on one side of the string track. So your cam would want to lean over, right? A little bit. Yeah. And so now with these, this new cam system, see how it has these dual yokes here? So the pressure, the tension's on both sides. Exactly. So, so they've done a couple of things. They went to a wider stance down here that's much wider and a much wider limb plus a, a balanced yoke system. So the bottom cam now, when you're drawing from static to full draw, that cam really can't lean a whole lot left and right. So, oh, so you're just really pulling the bow back on. And this is important to do on these. Um, a lot of guys that go home maybe want to play around with draw length and adjust that <clears throat> just a little. When, when you have these dual posts, they got to kind of lock together. So we like to kind of lock both of them like that. If you only tighten one side, it seems like the other side can loosen up and then it backs off. And we have a lot of guys coming in where they've lost a post on one side of that stop. Oh, so. Really? It's not a, the bow's still shootable, but if you shoot it too much, it actually rubs on the cable, causes some issues. So that's why we like to basically lock both sides down. And if you ever adjust that, just double check that. So we'll move this top one, pull that back. 
So sinks pretty dang good and we hit about 71.35 pounds. And so what I'm only gonna do is I'm gonna press it. I'm just gonna put a little bit of twist in these yokes to speed that top cam up. Kind of knowing that as you shoot, so this cable right now, this split cable only has about 70 pounds of tension on it. At full draw on the 70 pound bow, it'll have over 320. No way. Yeah, it loads up. So we're gonna run this a little fast initially, kind of knowing that as you shoot, it's gonna stretch and kind of break in, right. so. One twist there. Yeah. So I just did one on one on your yokes. Check it now. Yeah, see how that just it, a titch. See how yeah, just barely, barely pushing on that top. So cool. We'll start it right there. It should be pretty close. So. Sweet. So this is the uh, Hoyt Ultra Rest. Uh, Hoyt and Quality Archery Designs partnered up and kind of came out with their own version. And so it, it functions just like a QAD as far as when you put your arrow in there, you can actually draw back and the rest will lift. But if you don't fire and you let down, it still holds. But when you buy the Hoyt model, go to, to, to this bow, this mount bracket, there's kind of an optimal launcher angle. So when I bolt this to the bow, the launcher angle, when you draw back and these lift to a perfect 90 degrees and be parallel to where the string would be, and these rest tune a lot better there. So when you buy the Hoyt one, the engineers from Hoyt have figured out the perfect launcher angle. So when I bolt this on, I still might have to adjust the center shot and the vertical adjustment, but I don't have to worry about launcher angle. If you were to buy a standard QAD rest, which is universal, I can put it on any bow, mm -hmm. When I bolt that on and I get it there, I have to make sure that I position the rest this direction to get that launcher angle. If you buy the Hoyt model, which is only about 10 bucks more, it eliminates all that. So just makes my job a lot easier. Plus here's kind of what I tell guys, it's, I mean, hopefully your rest never ever comes loose while you're hunting, right? right? But if I put this rest on and it lines up and mounts perfectly to the riser, if I unbolt it and take it off and bolt it back on, it goes back to the same, same exact spot. spot. Yeah. So. If you ever, you know, out hunting and you, you can't bump your rest and have it shift or move it, it's locked against the riser. So okay. for 10 bucks, a lot of added security with Worth these. It. Yeah, for sure. And then has an extra launcher, the TL1 launcher. Certain bows with certain knock travel need a different launcher, dig tune, but we hardly ever have to use those. Usually mm -hmm. the launcher right out of the box works perfect. So we'll take this off. Pop that out. We see these little Hoyt stickers laying around everywhere because we always, every time I take them out, I set them there and half the time <laughs> I forget it. But they come with an extra one in the in the package there. But we do like running this a lot. This is a little spacer that we clip in. And what that does is there's two different mounting positions on this rest. Mm -hmm. When we put this in, it actually shifts the rest back. And we like using these a lot. For some reason, the arrows kind of launch point or kick point off the rest. These seem to tune a lot better every time we put those in and shift it back. Do you want do you want to kind of keep it neutral color like that, or do you want to like? Because I got to do some tie-ins. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the tie-ins. We can you can do something crazy on there. I just kind of keep it like a neutral color if you want. I think just kind of keep it neutral. Neutral. Okay, yeah. you wrap. Now is that like a thing that everybody does on their rest when they do that extra wrap? Because I've noticed just bows tuned by you do that. Well, and it makes sense. We started doing it a couple of years ago because. This felt works good until, you know, after you go out and shoot with it and get it in the cold, wet though, it wants to peel off. Yeah, right. I just want to peel. And so we just started tying it on there. That way your felt stays on better, it lasts longer. But, yeah, it's just like um, that extra reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, because all the edges would peel and then you see guys come in with, they've tried to like super glue it down, which I mean, it works. But yeah. This way it just, it looks good and, and it does have a purpose to just keep that felt on that launcher, so. Right. So next I'm gonna just tie on this loop. And Dude, this loop baffles my mind every time. I, yeah, I know. It. It's I won't lie, the first time I had to learn how to tie loops, it took me forever. I'm not right. I don't know why. It was like seemed like the hardest thing, but and there's different ways to tie it in. Like I know you know, there's some guys I work with that like to tie it in a little bit different, but as long as it doesn't move, I'm like, I don't really care as long as I it's, don't get how that simple of a knot holds that much tension yeah. over and over and over again. Yeah, because it kind of tightens on itself the way we tie it. So every time you pull, it's constantly just tightening on itself. Yeah, so, okay. but um, 
Anyway, so we put that on, and what we're gonna do is take this nice T-square here. We're gonna clip this on. And what we're gonna do is slide this up or down toward this point barely contacts the rest, like so. And before I pull it really snug, I'm just gonna shift this around. And it has, you can, on your size it's zero, but over here you can see it has like, you know, like quarter inch, you know, 16th, eight, right. that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is put that on there. And then, cause you're gonna be shooting that Easton axis, what I can look at now is if I stand here, whenever you measure the, the height position on the string, you always go off the bottom of the shaft. So see how I hold it there? So see how that's almost dang near zero? Yeah. On as far as the level goes? I'm gonna probably get it to where we're at least a 16th knock high and we're measuring off the bottom of the shaft. So I'll just take this loop and push it up just a little bit and I'll kind of remeasure to the bottom of that shaft Okay, we're we're about an eighth right there. And that's a great starting point for when we go to shoot through paper. So the only thing I'm doing here is just gonna set rest timing. So when I've tied this in, I've left this cord long. I haven't cut it yet. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing it back. I'm watching when this rest is lifting all the way. And so I've set enough of these. I can just kind of draw it back by hand and kind of feel it. Yeah, and get it right there. So I'll keep pulling this so I just let down. I'll pull this cable through. Little sort. So see how I, when I went to draw it, lifted too quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pulled it a little too tight. So I'll pull that back out just a little bit. You kind of, when you're going through the draw, you want to hit that last like two inches of draw, and that rest should lift, and then you should basically hit that wall. Okay. Pretty dang close there. Yeah. That's really good. So let's grab uh, one of those arrows, and we'll have you toss one through paper really quick. Sweet. So we just got the D loop and rest where we think we want it. We're just gonna shoot it through paper and see how it's doing. So we just got these uh, prototype AAE uh, arrow veins in, uh, custom hush ones. Uh, this is a shape that we really like. Um, we'll probably offer them in some different colors, but if you guys would like to see these on our shop, leave it in the comments below and it could be happening here pretty soon. Cool. Sweet, tear it up. So That's pretty close. Yeah, you know, these four fletches tear a lot bigger hole. Yeah. So they're a little bit harder to read, but we are a little knock low. So the arrow came in here and the back end came down. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is when I go to paper tune this to your hand, like I can set that bow and tune it how I like to, you know, shoot it. But every bow kind of likes to be shot a little bit different with grip pressure, that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is work a little bit with your forming technique and I'm gonna kind of tune you and the bow to kind of work better together now. So, yeah, so. Throw this guy back in there, lift that up, and then let me sneak on this side of you. Out here with your head square between your shoulders, you naturally wanted a bend, and I think it's because your old bow is about a half inch too short for you. So, okay. yeah. So, kind of turn your feet towards me. Good. So, a good solid base, and you want to be slightly open towards the target so your base is good there. And then take this front hand. Now, don't draw, but just point this hand clear up into the target. You can keep your release on there. Because what I want you to do is kind of push. I want you to feel your front hand pushing into that grip. Good. So when you come up here, straighten that front arm out a little bit more for me. Good. So I want you to take this hand, just roll out just here, right there. Perfect. Yep. 45 degree with your knuckles. Okay. So you can put your arm down to your shoulder and get tired. <laughs> it kind of makes it burn, doesn't it? Yeah. So the reason I want you to get in that position as you go to draw, if you start down here as you draw, this shoulder is going to lift up and then you're going to be collapsed and kind of crunched in. If you draw with this front wrist above your shoulder, as you draw, this front of my body is staying straight. I'm using my skeletal structure. So as I draw, I get anchored, and then I let this arm come down until I'm perfectly level. So I have a perfect T right here with my front, okay? So just squared up. Squared up. It, so when you're pulling back, it's, it's like a push-pull, it's not like a... I don't like the push-pull. I don't like to do that uh -huh. myself. My front arm is locked out against the bow. And you're and, all just... Yep, yeah, and then as far as this back elbow position goes, this is where personal preference comes in. Usually if you can draw lower across your chest, you're gonna use more back muscle and put less stress on your rotator cuff. Uh -huh. If you draw with this elbow high, a lot of guys like to do that, but it does put more pressure on the top, top part of your shoulder and your rotator cuff. And so okay. depends on... If you like to draw, if you like to draw down across the chest, it's I actually better. I think I've always been like a higher, but I'll most guys that, are. Yeah. yeah, most guys. But if your shoulder starts to feel impinged or starts to get sore, uh -huh. if you can switch and still come here and draw down across your chest and then come up like this and get anchored, it's actually a little bit better on your shoulder. On that shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So out, a yep. little bit higher, 45. Nice, good. Okay, see how we're angled down? I want you to angle that up, good. Tip your nose up on top of that string, solid. Relax the front fingers down. And then, remember how we talked about rolling that finger? Keep rolling it deeper. There you go. Now take this hand and we'll roll it this way just a bit. Now tip your nose up on top of that string more. See how you're on the side? There you go, better. Okay. Better. Cool, much better. Nice and square, tip your nose on that string. Roll that finger all the way over that trigger. Okay. There you go. Take that hand to your jawbone tighter though. Don't let there be a gap there. Now tip your nose up on top of that string. Good. And then smooth, slow. Better. Nice. Sweet. Yep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double check our level. I think we need to move this up just a hair more. And then I'm going to add a twist to the right yoke because that arrow is coming down. So the nice thing about a Hoyt bow with these yokes up here is I can kind of steer that bow left or right depending on how it likes to fire that arrow. By twisting the yoke. And then, so I'm going to twist that. We'll fire one more and then. We are going to knock tune that shaft just to make sure we're not chasing the arrow shaft around a little bit there okay. too. So. so right there, we're about three sixteenths knock high. So we're getting close. Like I said, these can go all the way up to a quarter if mm -hmm. we need to. So we could go a little bit more. But what I want to do is add a twist to that yoke. So adding this is going to do two things. Not only is it going to kind of straighten that top cam out a little bit for us, but again, it's going to make that cam go faster, kind of when we first started. So maybe we need a little bit more speed on that top cam. So throw it in here. One full twist. Cool. Let's grab that arrow and try that again. And draw that way, mm -hmm. but it has a potential. I used to do it all the time. Yeah. I just haven't shot in a long time. We need to fix that. Tom. I know. I was thinking the last time I shot a bow, and it's been like four ever. Yeah. Best anchor point yet. See how that string's on the tip of your nose there? Yeah, and I can feel my face. thumb and my. Just relax your hand, now, dude. Jaw. There you go. Good job, bone. Tip your nose. Roll that finger all the way up over that trigger. And then smooth, slow, and steady. I didn't see which paper tune it was. I was watching that. All right, we're getting closer then. Sweet. Nice. Okay, that looks pretty darn lazy. Yeah. But here's the th well, here's what's going to happen though. Say we go through, we do this tune, we get everything set, right? You run 500 arrows through that bow, uh -huh. those strings and cables are going to settle and stretch. So typically, what we tell all of our customers is we're going to get you pretty close like this right out of the gate. But then go run 500 arrows and come back and we're going to, we have to do a little bit of Once adjusting. Once everything is like settled mm -hmm. in. And usually after we do that first tune up after 500 shots, everything kind of holds pretty good after that. So most of the time, tell guys, you, you depending on how many arrows you shoot, most guys come back in about a year after that. But mm -hmm. I tell them, if your bow's not broke, don't fix it. If the arrows are flying good, grouping good, just run with it. But. Um, so that you can get Drop on, on, tip your nose up on top. Okay. Oh, I didn't even yeah. think about the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. happens all the time. I'll do another one real quick. Yeah. I'm pulling back. I'm just letting, like, it's like the yeah. release is just my arm. So, I'm not, like, holding what I like to do is put all your fingers behind your trigger and then put your thumb on that side. So, I don't, I don't hold that tight, but I do like to kind of pinch that release a little bit with my fingers. Sure. So as I draw back, see, I want my hand and wrist, everything in line and square, and then I can t come here and just straight in. So like with head position, this is where I see a lot of guys make a mistake is, if I was say shooting this direction here, my head square between my shoulders, when I draw, I should just basically turn my head, look towards the target, and then bring my hand in. See how square I look? Falls in, yeah. Yeah, and so what happens is, if you kind of let this hand or your wrist kind of get out of alignment or turn, or, or not, or say cock a little bit like this, when you anchor, a lot of times guys will get back and you'll see them try to duck their head down to the string or move their head out of position because they're they're fighting their anchor point. Like this knuckle, this is the most common thing. Guys want to use this knuckle against their cheekbone. You see that all the time. So guys will draw, they'll turn their hand like this and put that knuckle into their cheekbone. Yeah. Well, that does is forces the string away from your face and then you try to duck your head down and then you're out of alignment. So keep your head square. If you stand here and go, okay, I feel really balanced and square. When you draw and you turn and look, your head should not have to move like to the you know, side. It can come forward just a tiny bit, 
It's but better to have it brought to you. You're bringing your hand to your head. Yeah, that's a big, guys will draw and then they drop their head to their hand all the time and their head's yeah, forward. Yeah. So keep your head square and bring that more into you. There you go, straight, straight strong posture. So turn your this foot towards me a little bit. So we go, there you go. Your base is what was causing some of that to be off a little bit. So yeah. You look a lot better. Tip your nose up on top, roll that finger all the way over that trigger. So I'm gonna move this anchor position a little bit here. I'm gonna roll, okay? So don't find me, roll that wrist a little bit. Keep going, keep going, there you go. Okay, now tip your nose up on top. So. Okay. The drawing's pretty close. Now this is where we get, like, hey, we measure you at 28, but how you, like, you're, we talked about body structure, right? Well, if you're bending this, arm a little too far and this is coming back you might be you might be sucking back into the release a little bit so even though this looks good well, I'm looking like your body and you're wanting to lean so what we want and I want you to try this shot is the shot before your front arm was locked straighter and strong against the bow this shot you definitely collapsed in just a little bit more yeah, yeah, yeah. and the collapsing of your front arm causes that string the bow to come closer and then you wanted to lean back into it. So if you stand stronger, stand straight and push this arm and lock that out, everything's gonna come forward and get, there you go. See that more T-form? Yeah. So yeah. We, that's where I want you to be at full draw and not so much collapsed in. Cool. So we were at the uh, School of Jeremiah Foreman Technique, um, entered the class with maybe a D minus. Yeah. I'd say now we're like C plus, low B minus. This guy can, <laughs> just a few simple techniques to change and. We're tuning my arrow just by on my position of my body. So I uh, had the carbon spider the last couple of years and we believe that the draw length might have been a little bit short for me. So I kind of just going out and shooting every day, I kind of developed some bad habits. And now that we're tuning this bow to me, we're tuning my habits back to the correct bow. So that's where we're at right now. One thing I want you to focus on when you get these. So I'm gonna re-level it, make sure it's leveled to this bow. But see where the pins are set? Like if we were imagining like 30, 40, 50, okay? Mm -hmm. See the big gap from that bottom pin to that bubble? Um, two things I'd like to fix on that. When I, when I bring my pins down, I want my bottom pin, my 50 yard pin, to be pretty close to my bubble, not to the point where it's interfering with my sight picture. But um, what happens, two things. The lower you move the pins in the housing, the higher the housing itself is gonna start up. So I'll actually get more distance on my slide, more clearance. But two, when I am aiming at those longer distances, I can see my pin and my bubble in my peripheral vision. You so have to be looking. Yeah, so if you're, see that big gap, say you're getting out to 80 yards, right? You're aiming, you're looking at your pin on the target, and then you gotta look down at your bubble and then look back up. If you bring that pin and that bubble tighter together, you it's can like see- the same picture. Same picture. It'll actually tighten your groups up. So not only will you get more distance, but it'll make you more accurate there too. So we're gonna drop those pins down and we want that top 30 yard pin to almost start kind of dead center in the housing is where I usually like to start mine there. It's frustrating, it's harder to level them out because you used to be able to run like a carpenter level from pocket to pocket. Well this, this bottom pocket's much wider so if you're on a carpenter level, it's way off center now. So there is certain spots of the riser you can try to hook these levels to, but what we've been finding works well, assuming that you know Hoyt has built a square riser here where the sight mount would go. And black gold's usually, they're, they're building that at a perfect 90. I'm using this bubble right here to basically make sure and tell me the bow is leveled in the vise, okay? And then you can see that the bubble down there is to the right. Now we gotta, we gotta know if that is actually the, the first or the second axis that's causing that. And how you find out, we're gonna roll this all the way down to the very bottom. We're gonna tighten this level on here. So, see how that bubble down there? Okay. Is that one still in the middle, the, right there? Perfect, so looking at this, that tells me that this first axis is slightly off now. You can see it's to the right. So if I loosen this screw, I'm gonna pivot this whole block that direction. I don't really care about this bubble yet in the scope. I'm looking at making sure that the bubble here to the riser and the bubble to your first axis is level and square is what we're gonna go off of. So 
So now you can see I've set the bow back to level. First axis is pretty much perfect. We're really, really close on that second axis, but we do need to make a small adjustment there. So, and on these black golds, what you do is you loosen these two screws and you're gonna pivot the sight ring to, okay. to cause that. Yeah, just roll that over, so. Perfect. So I'll tighten that top one, but. So now we know that your first uh, and second axis is perfect. True, yeah. And then we'll check third axis here in a second. So my opinion, the two main things that affect third axis is either riser flex or bow hand torque, how you physically hold the bow. So, you know, there's some guys that actually leave their bow in a vise like this and tilt the bow down forward. And they use these ham ski levels and still adjust their scope this way to the bow. But as we were kind of paper tuning, you know how we were changing grip pressure mm -hmm. just a tiny bit was affecting paper tune. Well, grip pressure also affects third axis. So the way we usually like to set it is to our own hand is my favorite way to do it. And so you can get one of these ham ski levels that has this wire here that does that gives you a reference. So what you do is you would draw, we usually, usually like to use a rope as a palm bob. So you draw back and you make sure that this point is perfectly on that rope that's hanging from the ceiling, okay? And then as you're at full jaw, you're using that on the rope, and then you're gonna look at that bubble. And if that bubble's to the left or to the right, that tells us if we gotta move, what direction we gotta move the scope on this axis here. So we're gonna uh, set a peep next, and then we can double check your third axis, the last step. Okay, so uh, the next step is setting, getting a peep sight set, okay? So what I'm actually, what I'm gonna do, when you come to full draw, I want you to get back to that same exact anchor position we're working on. Jawbone, tip your nose, keep that hand straight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this marker and I'm gonna slide this up or down on the inside of the string. And I need you to tell me where it blocks the center of your pin, your center of your scope, okay? Okay. And the reason we're doing it this way is, you know how we talked about there's three anchor points, jawbone, nose, and then the third anchor point, which is visual, is your peep sight. Well, way too many guys try to chase the visual anchor point. So I'll work with them, get their hand and nose in. If I throw a peep sight in there, they'll draw back and then try to move change their head, everything change everything. Do, yeah. So this way, you get to your anchor, jawbone, nose, I'll slide this up or down the string, you tell me where it blocks and then I can mark it so I know a great starting point to actually put your peep in the string. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, remember set strong, bring that arm, there you go. Much stronger position, solid. Good anchor, tip your nose. Up. Right there. Right there. Okay, and go and fire that shot. Nice clean release, roll that finger. Okay. Is that pretty accurate? Okay. And you see we're back to that silver sharpie mark there yeah, yeah so we're gonna have you draw it back a couple more times but I mean, that way i can kind of fine tune it we still need to slide it up and down a little bit cool. much better okay up just a hair there nice it seems tip your nose up on that string okay it's like right around my sight window okay tip your nose on that string perfect How's that look? Perfect. Okay. You can go ahead and roll. Might execute a shot there. A little bit. There you go. Tight and nice. Much better. Tip your nose on top of that string. You need nose contact. How's that halo look? Good. Okay, as I slide this down, slowly just move that anchor point up that string a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's perfect in the window. Move that down. How about now? Perfect. Okay. And then when I roll back up. I'm just gonna slide back. A yep. Bit. Perfect. Cool. Nice. So we got the sight mounted, leveled. Um, we got the peep on there. We with the sight, we did the first axis and the second axis, right? Mm -hmm. Have we encroached on the third axis? We're gonna do that last step here. Okay. So, so we got the the peep on level. It was cool if you saw when I drew back and I had my anchor right, everything right. He slowly brought down a marker to where the pipe would, where the peep would land just making sure I keep that anchor point because if the peep is looks right, 
when I pull back, if I'm not in the same form and I'm having to adjust to that peep, I'll lose my anchor point. So we got the peep where it needs to be with the correct anchor point. Now we're just tying it in. So we're going to use this Hamski third axis level. For, for guys at home that don't have one of these though, I have used the pins in my scope. <clears throat> it's been pretty accurate, but what we're going to do is we're going to step in the other room. We've got a, a rope hanging from the ceiling. When you draw back, what we're going to do is you're going to draw perfectly square at the wall, and then you're going to angle up as high as you can, okay? And what I want you to do is keep this post perfectly on the rope. Aligned with the yep. rope. Okay. And then don't worry about this. So once you get this perfectly on the rope, we're going to then look at that bubble, and that's going to tell us if your third axis is off, okay? Cool. Okay. Um, Come all the way up. Run that post perfectly on that rope. Okay, so see how that bubble's hugging that left? Yep. Right there. Okay, go ahead and let, let down. So we were a little on the left and it kind of came back in and went back left. So I'm going to just make a slight third axis adjustment. What I want to do is I'm going to turn this scope this direction just of one degree because that bubble was hanging that left side there. Okay. Sure. okay. Jay, quick disclaimer don't do this without an arrow yes, typically. Make, <laughs> you got to be careful when you do this, no arrow. Make sure you keep that finger behind the trigger. Perfect. Cool. Nice. Yeah, we look good. So, okay, yeah. you're leveled up now. So, all three accesses dial. They're true. Sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's that is the final product. We still, I'll probably still have to side it in. And that is the Hoyt Helix. We have her set up. Everything's dialed. I'll have to side it in a little bit, but we are good to go. My man Jeremiah here. Yeah. He is the dude. Any question you have, this guy has an answer for and uh, details too. Um, if you guys are ever in the area or I've, you guys have had people across the country. Yeah, now. a lot of other guys have seen the videos and call and go, man, I've never seen that done before. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, man, check us out, you know, hit us up. We can, a lot of guys, we can help you out over the phone, but I mean, we have guys traveling from a long ways away to kind of help us work with them and get their bows dialed in. So yeah. Yeah, it's a great shop, great atmosphere. This is an awesome place. Every time we come to them, we leave with a giant smile on our face. So thanks for watching today, you guys. That's the Hoyt Helix build with Wild Arrow and my man, Jeremiah. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you would like to talk to the Bowtech, we will leave the phone number in the description and also their website. Thanks for watching.